Today's video, we're going to talk about why, if you're going to do Google Display Network ads, why you don't want to use under bidding automatically maximize conversions option there to try to, which is basically Google trying to find you more customers without doing manual bidding on your Google Display campaign. I'm going to explain why you don't want to do that, how it's not going to get you any more sales and actually end up wasting most, if not probably all of your money. And then what are your alternative options to get Google Display Network ads to work? For a lot of you guys who watch this channel, I know you probably haven't had su uh, success with Google Display Network given most people who try it don't get it to work. It's much harder to get it to work than search ads if uh, just from the standpoint of being a beginner as a lot more pieces to get right of the pieces of the puzzle that you have to get just right in order for it to work on the bright side if you know what those pieces are your competition ain't gonna probably know how to do it and you can clean up rather well you could scale a big campaign Google search campaigns while it works well there's only so many searches Google display network can be explosive in how many sales it can bring so with that said I'm gonna give you a what your alternatives are to get Google Display Network to work. And in general, if you haven't tried it before or couldn't get it to work before, just information that based upon us making many, many different tests at our PPC agency, what works and what doesn't with Google Display Network itself. So with that said, I'll get right into the content. Uh, so don't, overall, as it comes to Google Display Network, you want to set things up manually. That manual setup of your campaigns is the basis of getting the control you need to get the precise targeting that you need and without all the waste to get the cost of running the ads to pay for itself after all your expenses. Don't get me wrong, automated bidding with maximized conversions or maximized conversion value and a target cost per action or a target ROREZ setting is great for search campaigns. I use automated bidding on all of our search campaigns now because Google's algorithm has got, gotten good enough now where it can actually do a better job with us automating and letting Google do the bid optimization at the keyword level than we could do on our own manually using what they call a bid adjustment formula and deciding how much we should bid based upon how well a keyword's performing, either up or down, based upon that keyword doing you know, better or worse than average. Uh, specifically with that, uh, and we, by the way, just as a quick side, we also still do bid, adjust, bid adjustments on time of the day, day of the week, gender, age, parental status, because that helps in addition to automated bidding on search campaigns, which I should make a video separately about that. Uh, but as it comes to Google Display Network campaigns, um, either if you're doing first click display campaigns, i.e. you're marketing to people who have never seen or heard of you the, or seen your ads at all, or, or in general just been, haven't been to your site at least, uh, or you're doing remarketing, which is ads that are supposed to show up on Google Display Network for people who exclusively have been to your site, this you're not going to want to use automated bidding and automatically maximize conversions and have Google get you more customers just like what with search ads can and would actually recommend you doing there. So as it pertains to automatically uh, maximize conversions, if you aren't aware already, that's under the settings menu. You go to under bidding and then under bidding, it's gonna ask, what do you wanna focus on? Certainly you can select conversions, but um, when it asks underneath, how do you want to get conversions? You wanna set, uh, select, manually select bids not automatically maximize conversions, which is what I'm telling you specifically is the danger zone, what you want to stay away from, what's going to waste tons and tons of your money. And you're not getting basically anything for it in terms of sales, in terms of quality leads, if you're generating leads. I've tried doing, uh, you know, I don't ever badmouth anything on this channel. I said, we've tried it, uh, it, you know, out ourselves. And this channel's designated for stuff that we're trying at our PPC agency where we have close to a 50 or so clients at any given time and giving you the stuff that works as well as the stuff that doesn't work. So you don't have to waste your money on it yourself. Uh, I've actually then with that tried uh, setting under what do you want to focus on? I'll put conversions. Like I said, you want to do that part, but um, when under where it specifically says, uh, how do you want to get conversions? As I mentioned before, is the second option under the bidding part of the, you know under the set settings menu 
Uh, we put it at, as automatically maximized conversions and, and doing it for lead, generations camp, uh, lead generation campaigns where we're trying to generate a lead and do a two-step sale where we get the lead and then you know, they, they call or they fill out the contact form and then we got to sell them after that. What we would actually get using automatic automatically maximized conversions was a whole bunch of spam leads and a much, much, much higher cost per lead while we're at it. So, and I understand why this is occurring. Specifically, Google gets feedback. So on Google Display Network, Google and defense of Google here has a hard time policing the amount of bot traffic a site gets. Uh, and taking a step back further here, if you don't understand how it works, the reason why you can advertise on you know, crosswords.com is because crosswords.com allows Google to run their ads on their website and then take half of the cut of the person who wants to advertise on crosswords.com. So with that said, Google does no way to, well, to a degree uh, they do, but uh, pretty much have no way to decide the ads that, you know, ultimately if you're trying to advertise on crosswords.com, the ads that are shown there which, you know, how much of those ads are shown to bots that are on that website versus real people. And, uh, you know, a lot of, more than you think, a uh, uh, number of different sites out there are gonna pay and build fake traffic to come to their site and click on the ad so they can up how much they're making from their advertising on their site. And which will, if you don't know how to, you know, work around it, can completely drive your campaign results into the ground. For the most part, by the way, if you want to get around fake clicks, and which is why most people think Google Display Network doesn't work, you go after bigger websites. Uh, even though that's not completely, you know, you're not out of the woods with that. I the it, does the site look like it has legitimate traffic on it? Some random blog that looks like it has crappy writing on it. Chances are that business, it's way at least more likely that, that business doesn't have that is going to be more likely to send fake traffic through the site. A lot of times they'll go and like post ads over in the Philippines saying get paid to click on ads and then they'll get people to click on their ads and that's like how they legitimately make money. So they're just, fraud. they're screwing Google and they're screwing Google's advertisers. Whereas on Forbes.com, obviously you know, they don't have to, they, I mean, they certainly still can do that. And I've seen a lot of bot traffic even on a Forbes.com, but they don't have, they have, you know, there's real people reading that site at least. So it's less likely, or at least at a, at a total, uh, out of a hundred clicks, you're going to, it's more likely to get real clicks from real readers in that case. But anyway, in that situation, Google um, perhaps gets these bot traffics to click on the ads. And then a lot of times these bots are sophisticated in these scams to, you know, be able to get into your wallet and generate fake clicks on their website so they can make money from these fake clicks on their website. They'll actually program their bots or tell the people from the Philippines that are clicking on these ads to go, not just click on the ad, but to, in order to get paid, if they're telling humans to do this in third world countries or whatever, go to the website and fill out the form. If you don't do that, then you know we're not paying you. Or certainly not every time, but every 10th ad you click on, you must fill out the form so that this gives the advertiser a much greater, um, there's a, a false confidence going on there. Because if you have conversion tracking, you say these leads coming in, if you're not actually checking the leads, which a lot of times the person managing the ads don't actually interact with the leads, they'll actually start thinking, wow, this is working, let's do more of it. And it'll build them more demand for the, the ads and the bot traffic than if they didn't go through there and submit false leads. These are things you gotta be aware of. So especially, when, so in other words, when you're running display ads, you always have to look at your lead quality to make sure that you're not just getting all these bot leads, if you will, or these spam leads, if you will. So with that said, anyway, with the automated, automatically maximized conversions, they would pick up and they would see a, a lead came in at a cheap rate from a bot, so let's get more bots. Let's optimize for more bot traffic. And you get into a perpetual feedback loop that goes and takes your campaign down and down and down. Whereas you had, so, you could have had something that was working perfectly fine, which in this exact situation, this is what we did or what we tried because we normally wouldn't go to automated bidding anyway, right away, because that doesn't make sense. 
particularly as you're running display campaigns, it's very, very, very hard, or should I say very easy, to have your campaign run a little bit too wild and not be profitable. So you have to start very conservative in your targeting to get things to work. But once we did that, when we tried to experiment switching over to automatically uh, maximize conversions, it would go off the rails. It, the, the amount of conversions would go way up, but they were all spam leads, and therefore the cost per lead went way up. And that's why specifically, to keep it short, you don't wanna use automatically maximized conversions, okay? I've also tried doing this uh, uh, using um, e-commerce websites. Sorry, my marker doesn't work very well there and I made an error here. Uh, to where we would put, what do you wanna focus on conversions under the bidding menu under settings and then from there, or sorry, conversion value, indicating that we want purchases, uh, thinking that maybe this does a better job if Google uh, isn't gonna be look, you know, in terms of that feedback loop I was talking about before where it gets a spam lead and then optimizes for more spam leads as a result because those spam leads are cheaper than the real leads and then just get you more of what you don't want. Uh, we thought maybe with an e-commerce site this would work out better because Google can't send us a fake customer but so we, we set up our e-commerce display campaign that was doing okay before, uh, that was set up so that uh, it's a focus on conversion value, not conversions by itself, uh, indicating we want you know, purchase revenue. And then from there, we switched it over to automatically maximize conversions so that we could see if Google's algorithm can get us more customers, more con you know, and specifically more or higher revenue, uh, sales revenue. And in that situation, my ROI just went down the tubes with no extra sales. We tried this a couple different times, thinking maybe it was just you know the instance with this one company for a, it was a home uh, improvement product company, and then we tried it for a clothing brand. Excuse me, and it was the same basically same basic thing. And so, um, you know, with that, long story short, you don't want to use automatically maximized conversions if you're doing lead generation or you're trying to do e-commerce or selling a product because you'll get the same result either way. Uh, was quite disappointed. I mean, seeing how well automated bidding strategies are working on search campaigns as well as shopping campaigns or PMAX campaigns. For PMAX, uh, at least I made a video about this. PMAX, that was a smart shopping campaign that got transferred over. The automated bidding seems to do okay. And certainly with search campaigns, like I said, the automated bidding does better than the manual bidding. As it comes to the display campaigns, it does not do better. Even if it, you're telling Google to get more purchases, because it ultimately doesn't get you these fake purchases, like you, know, like you get the fake leads, but it starts opening up the spigot on all this traffic you can get, and the targeting isn't the same level of targeting that you had before when you set up the targeting yourself. So um, from the standpoint of using automated bidding with search campaigns with Google, I understand why it works because you're fundamentally getting traffic from the same keywords. Uh, why automated bidding does better with search campaigns is because it, it sub-segments the people searching for the keyword and then decides whether you should show up for that keyword or not based upon all the past behavior of that search. And then when a person has certain triggers like it notices when somebody goes to these three websites before they make this search for this keyword, they're 50 times more likely to purchase. So therefore, you should have your ad show up even if, and charge you a little bit more, but have your ad show up because it's able to, it, we, they know statistically from prior performance on this same keyword in the past that this type of person searching for this keyword at this time is gonna be almost statistically guaranteed to to, to turn into a customer or turn into a lead, you want your ad to show up. As it comes to display advertising, it doesn't just simply hyper segment, you know, the people that, cert that see an ad on the same websites. It's actually, and I know this because I looked through where's, where the ads run in the where the ads run report, and it, your ads start showing up on all these websites that didn't show up for, before, indicating to me, therefore, it's not conservative like the automated bidding on search campaigns, basically just slightly deviating and actually, you know, looking at the data of what you have and then just trying to, within everything you got in terms of where your ad's showing up, focusing on the parts of that that are working the best with the display campaigns, it goes the other direction basically, 
it starts going and doing things that you your targeting wasn't set up to do, if you will. So, or just going broader, if you will. And uh, so, basically, um, and with the targeting settings, it's a little bit less, you know, more nebulous, if you will, in that, you know, you're targeting, you, you Google, you could say, get me, with the similar two audiences, get me customers like the people that have bought from me before or have come to our site. And so with that, it's not just looking at, in other words, the people, or as it, it seems to us, I don't have the inside knowledge from Google here, but they're not looking within what you got and then just trying to, you know, spin less and then focus on the part of the people that look like the people that have been to your site before that ultimately have bought from you at a high rate, they're just going wider. They're, 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 being, they're, they're going more loose with it as to what somebody should, you know, somebody that looks similar to a person that's been on your site or looks similar to a customer, uh, but is more liberal as to, you know, maybe how many traits they had to have similar to somebody who's been on your site in terms of being, if that person's eligible to see your ad or not. So respectively, so, and, and to be clear, that was actually what we did. We had the similar to targeting and we switched over to automatically maximize conversions and the results were not great. We were showing up in all these other places. Uh, we also did um, targeting of in-market segments and it, we also got all these other websites that have our, we also had our ad show up on all these other websites that we didn't want to either. Potentially, I didn't run the test where we were only trying to run ads on specific sites to see with maximize, uh, with automatically ma uh, maximized conversions, if the ROI would improve in that situation. So maybe if somebody wants to run that test, that would be more similar to how uh, automated bidding strategies work on Google search ads. Cause like I said, it, it looks within the keywords that you're already targeting. So within this case, maybe it looks within the websites that you're saying that you want your website to show up on, which is targeted placements by the way, and picks the people that are on that site that they know is more likely to convert. And in that case, even with that, it would need so much traffic and so many conversions from each website in order to do that well, uh, effectively, that I don't see how um, that's gonna be reasonable for most people to do anyway. Just some basic food for thought. It would be nice if Google would look at all the people that have purchased from us or turned into a lead and saw all the traits and how they were unique and how you know, those people were different from the, you know, display targeting that we had and then started getting rid of the stuff that didn't work and then just doubling down on the stuff that does work, but they don't do it. it, it it's not, ultimately the results show that it's not happening. So anyway, we could kind of give up that wish, if you will. Uh, yeah, as they say, you can wish in one hand and shit in the other, what fills up faster? <laughs> I haven't heard that for a while, but everybody's, I think, heard that uh, colloquialism. Anyway, with that said, now, uh, you know, long story short, we know automatically maximizing conversions to let Google figure out how to get us a customer at a higher rate or uh, doing a better job of it, spending less money to get the same customers or just in general, spreading the targeting out, which is what they're really doing to find us more customers at the same cost at the very least. They don't actually do that. What you wanna do if you wanna get more conversions or just get display ads to work in the first place is actually target more of these display network strategies that we're routinely using at our firm for our clients. So what I've done here is I listed the top six things in terms of the targeting on our display campaigns that you want to target uh, that will generally work for most people if it applies to you and did it in the order in which is most profitable first. So number one on my list is most profitable most of the time. Number two is the second most profitable most of the time for most companies and so forth all the way down to number six. On a display campaign, targeting is the hardest thing to get right. If you could find 100 people that would buy from you if they just knew of your product, you could just have a regular ad that shows your product and you would make money. Targeting is also hard because it's very easy to target too many people and then based upon that, even though your buyers are in there because you targeted too many other people who won't buy or are not buyers, your campaign now becomes economically unfeasible. So realistically, we have to narrow down enough to find an audience that if the people in that audience seen your ad, at least 1% or greater of those people would actually reasonably wanna buy. If we can do that, 
Everything else becomes extremely easy and we pretty much got something that should work with Google Display Network to make money. That's generally that 1% rule pretty much applies and that's at least how you should be thinking about it uh, at a, overall or as a whole. Um, so with that, if you could do that, like I said, your ad creating skills don't have to be as good, but generally you wanna come up with a good ad that has an offer on it a search ad on Google, if you're looking for plumbing services, just has to say plumbing services to mostly do a good job. You could also have an offer on a search ad, call for special pricing this week only and get more response. But even if you didn't do that second part with the offer, your ad would do okay because people are already looking to buy. When somebody's reading an article, they see your banner ad for your Google Display Network campaign that you're running. And uh, ultimately you're, you have an ad that says plumbing services. There's nothing there for the, them to act on. Uh, you absolutely, in that case, need something for them to say, why me, why now? Uh, why me? Well, I have a plumbing problem. You're hoping that the person that you're targeting, you've targeted it well enough that that person has a, problem, a plumbing problem. And why now? Because you're going to give me 10% off for doing this right now versus delaying and potentially waiting until next week to decide who I'm going to go with. I'll just click on this ad now. Otherwise, I'm never going to be able to ultimately find this company again and find this offer again. That's the type of thing you gotta do with Google Display Network ads. And the same thing with other display advertising online such as Facebook, LinkedIn and stuff. To actually get the campaign, the economics of the campaign to pay off, uh, i.e. the ads pay for them, uh, you, you know, your sales pay, pay for the cost of the ads and the products and the services and everything else on your overhead at your company and still have money left over. So that's in general in terms of the ad and you know, gotta have an ad and an offer that will work. Then the rest of it's just the targeting. The number one thing in terms of the targeting that's going to be, that's going to have the, uh, ultimately, like I said, you're looking for audiences that have the highest concentration of buyers because you're ultimately paying every time your ad shows up. That Google only charges you per click, but if your cost, if your click through rate goes down, your cost per click goes up. Effectively, then you can think about it as every time my ad shows up, I have to pay for this. So the more people who see my ad who are not buyers, the more money I'm wasting, you waste over a certain threshold, you're not profitable anymore after expenses. So how can we get the highest concentration of buyers in an audience to make the campaign economics work? And the first easiest way to do that, or one thing to do on the top of the list here is to run a brand display campaign. I know, I know what you're saying here is, oh, Corey, a brand display campaign, I've never heard of that. What a brand display campaign is, is somebody who's ultimately heard of you and, and has been talking about it recently because Google, through their apps, can listen to what stuff's going on. Google, please don't kill me here. Um, ultimately, there's other apps that Google buys data from that are listening to you. Uh, they can see you know, what people you're typing on your computer, what you're typing on your phones. Basically, and this is excluding remarketing, if they've been to your site, that's going to be the most profitable thing to do, assuming you're driving already highly qualified traffic to your site. But beyond that, a lot of people have, have talked about you, somebody's referred a company to you, you've checked for reviews on a company, you, you were researching and thinking about a brand, but without actually going to that brand site yet. So there's not a huge amount, but there's still a significant chunk. So instead of just targeting people that have been to your site, why not target people who are thinking about your company but haven't quite got to your site yet, or we're just talking about it with a friend in a room? Because it, it, I know this isn't that conspiratorial. You can I have I have a video specifically about this if you want to check on my channel. But you could check around. You could just be simply talking about something with a friend and ads that are rele relevant to that will start showing up. And if you don't believe me, start paying attention to your ads. This is what happens and this is why these companies, Google and Facebook, are making so much damn money. The, it's about data, 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 data. Not that we have a search engine, but we have the data that we can sell an opportunity to a business owner where we know what somebody's gonna buy before they know they're gonna buy it. And therefore, you have an opportunity to make a profit. And then because they're so knowledgeable about who's going to buy, they can sell those ads, if you will, for much higher cost than if they didn't, you know, be able to provide the advertiser themselves uh, that 
increase in likelihood that that person, if you know, that sees the ad is going to buy, if you will. Anyway, so somebody's talking or thinking about your brand, if you will. Um, not so much literally thinking, obviously, but you know they typed in looking for reviews of your company. They didn't get to your site, but they were talking about it to a friend, or they didn't talk about it to a friend, but they were searching for the reviews. You can actually create a custom intent audience, is what it's called, and type in all your versions of your brand names, trade names, website names, legal names, product names, service names, and if they have talked about it anywhere recently, near or with a friend, or they've searched for information about your company, on blogs, forums, review sites, whatever, you can have your banner ad there show up for them. And uh, with that, if, because they've heard of your company, you would want to gear your ad to say uh, more so that you know maybe you won an award and that you're offering something, uh, you know, that there's only a limited supply of what you're offering as a way to get that person's attention because you know if they're researching you, they don't need so much a gimmick to get them in the door. You have to offer them a discount and that would just eat into your margins more. So everything I'm mentioning here, try to match up the user and their current, you know, position of where they're in and where their mind is to what you're saying because you'll get better results that way and obviously better margins because of the price thing like I'm talking about if you, if and when you, you need to put an actual offer in that ad. But with that then, the people that the, so the mo in other words, the most profitable sub-segment of traffic out of the billions of users that you can target through Google Display Network is going to be somebody who's already thinking about your brand or heard of your brand or been talking about it. So I would start with that. And once you've done that, you can do something similar here with competitors. You can create, what I do is I create a list of all, every single competitor of our client, our client has. Uh, the companies themselves, and if the company, our client sells products, I'm going to look at what's the model number of every competing product and how does that match up what you know the product that we our client has and offers what are all the directly comparable products by model number that compete with that product and then do it for the next product the next product the next product and so what i'll do then I'll, is i'll go back to create this custom intent audience which allows you to target anybody who essentially has been searching for that competitor or that competitor's product individually by that item and uh, have an ad show up just for them. So they're looking for that competitor. They you know basically searched for that competitor recently, or uh, been talking about that competitor stuff. You know like I was talking about before. We can have an ad show up for just just for them. And with that, what I'll do, going back to my list, I'll write down competitor by competitor why my client's business is better than that one competitor, three times as fast, half the price. This competitor were two times as fast. At one third the price. This competitor were, you know, half you know half the cost, but we're only you know 20% as fast. And then we'll create a, a template, an ad template that literally says that. Why buy name of competitor? Which that could get that could be a trademark issue. You can do it if you do do it. You do have the competitor's name in there. You'll get three times the click through rate and profit from the ad. But you could say why do business? But thinking of doing business with competitor, we're three times as fast as that competitor at half the price. Click here to see why. And then you could send them to a blog post that explains specifically what comparing you, your product side by side with that product, why it's three times as fast for half the price. And that's the type of targeting that makes a lot of money with Display Network. Um, most people with Display Network, the reason why they can't get it to work is they just say, plumbing services. Right? Nobody gives a shit about that. Or they have plumbing services for 10% off. Nobody gives a shit about that. But when you can actually target somebody who you know is about ready to buy your plumbing services because they're at the point of cross-comparing your direct competitors, they're astronomically more likely to buy than the person that's even just searching for plumbing services by itself. They're looking at different competitors. They're probably just comparing prices at that point or their reviews at that point. They're going to be a higher, uh, profitable, uh, more profitable opportunity. Given, like I said, your audience, the higher the concentration of, of would-be buyers that you have in there, the more profit you can make per dollar spent on ads. So you want to target people at the bottom of the sales funnel first. Anyway, so we'll create a banner ad for every single competitor, saying why we're better than that competitor, and drive people to our site to a dedicated page that says why we're better than that competitor. 
you could take shortcuts and send them to just your regular product page instead of a page dedicated to saying why you're better than that competitor. Uh, but you're not going to make as much money. Okay. You'll make, like I said, three times as much money if you go ahead and explain why you're better than that competitor in your ad and your landing page easily, if not more. So, and if you don't want to say the competitor's name, you could say, are you thinking about buying X? And you'll still make a lot of money because the targeting is so precise. Uh, you'll just won't, won't make uh, quite as much. And the same thing on the landing page, you could say, before buying X, consider our product because it actually is faster and better and cheaper than the rest of the products you're probably researching out there. Speak to the user on their level. You know that they're, the, the great thing about the, the level of targeting you can do with Google Display Network, you can get inside the head directly and speak and therefore speak directly to that person. We know you're researching other products or other companies for plumbing services to fix your broken pipe. Here's why we're the, actually the one you want to go with. Da, 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 da. So anyway, this stuff, I know you're, you're probably just rolling your eyes and saying, oh, this, this is not easy. Stuff that's easy doesn't make money. Who's going to make all the money is the person who goes the extra mile in your niche in terms of making it easier and more attractive to do business with you. And that doesn't just come from having a better product and service, it comes from better marketing. And you get better marketing as it comes to PPC, generally speaking, when you be more relevant to the user. How can you target somebody that you know already wants what you have or wants the information you have and speak to them directly in their own language, like I was just describing. So that's another great way to run Google Display Ads that will generally almost always work in every market. These first two, 99% of businesses out there, this is going to work well. So there's no excuse for you not to try Google Display Network out for yourself for that reason. As we get into some of this other stuff, maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't, or maybe it works a little bit. The great thing with Google Display is you can actually decide to bid less per click if it's not working quite as well and still get some customers, but not quite enough that you, you know, that to be amazing, but at least the customers you got were at a decent ROI. As we go into the third thing, the third like most profitable thing that we do generally is the auto-generated custom intent audiences. So Google looking at the traffic of your site when you have your Google Analytics and Google Ads pixel on your site will look at the traffic that you have on your site and then it'll create a custom intent audience, people that are in market for uh, you know, like what you have to, to sell and let you target that audience separately or they'll group them together. So for instance, if you sell baseball bats, after a while, it takes a little while, this isn't gonna happen right away, but you know, basically after you run your ads on maybe Google search for a while and you had your Google's pixel on your site, you'll see the targeting menu pop up, custom intent audience baseball bat buyers or baseball bats. And so with that, Google's identified essentially, uh, they know you sell baseball bats and now even though there wasn't a targeting option, baseball bats in the default targeting options of Google Display Network ads, they created one for you. And when they do that, we found it works great. So. If you eventually see this auto-generated custom intent audiences, you should try it because they generally will work. So there's that. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Number four, default exact match uh, in-market audiences. So essentially, uh, in-market audiences are the best because those are the people that are looking to buy. Um, uh, these aren't. This isn't a lifestyle or demographics uh, option for targeting. These are people looking to buy. So in-market audiences are generally the profitable ones. Uh, out of all the targeting options, the affinity audiences, in-market audiences are the ones that you typically want to go after. And with that, if you can find in the default targeting options which uh, for in-market audiences, which there's going to be hundreds of them there, if there actually are or is one in there that's like directly matching what you sell, i.e. if you sell bowling balls, if they have in-market audiences bowling balls or bowling equipment, or, or, or I would say, sorry, just to be clear, bowling balls is what I'm talking about here. If you sell bowling balls or you're, you know, this campaign is supposed to target people buy or who want to buy bowling balls, you want the, the in-market audience for bowling balls itself is the one that's pretty much going to be a gimme that'll work every time for you in that situation. If it's just bowl, if the in-market audience that they have to pick from is just bowling gear, it may or may not work. So I don't want to say this is amazing 
if it's close, but if it's exact pretty much to your item, it'll generally generally work pretty good or you know mostly will work, I'll just say. So that's what I'm talking about there. After you, you know, uh, of course, you may uh, have to start out with the, um, you could, or should I say, start out with the end market audience that's matching your product. And then eventually you'll get some custom intent audiences that are similar. So if you're going back to the bowling ball example, maybe they have the end market audience for you to choose for your targeting bowling balls. You target that. Eventually it'll say you sell, um, you know, uh, high end, uh, uh, custom bowling balls. It'll create a custom intent audience called uh, high-end custom bowling balls for you. So you can target that and that'll work even better than the default in-market audience for bowling balls it, itself. Why? Because it's more custom and more, uh, you know, obviously closer matching to what you sell, but not specifically only or just because of that. It's because th for some reason, just the, the auto-generated audiences, they just work so damn well. They know looking at your site, you know, ultimately what you're after. And when they create the audience, it just seems to work really well. So basically, long story short, anytime you get these auto generated audiences to pop up, as long as it sounds reasonable to you, you should at least give it a test. Not very many of you guys are going to be lucky enough to find an in-market audience that matches your product directly. But if you are a luck, one of the lucky ones, you should definitely always try that out too, because it generally will work. Number five, combined audience segments. So I've made a video about co uh, combined audience segments about six or seven videos ago now, I think. And with that, what that is, is the other thing that's great about Google Display Network is you could define your, to find that audience that has at least 1% or greater of buyers on it. So that even though Google's charging a dollar a click, you'll take, you'll pay those a uh, dollar a click you know, all day long, basically because the audience of people that you're targeting is so, so saturated with customers and therefore profitable that you want every click you can get. With that said, if you can't through the, you know, default targeting options itself, find that audience that's just so highly saturated with customers, you can't, you know, you'll, you'll gladly, you know, let Google take every dollar that you have to spend. You can create a combined audience segment that will define potentially more than one audience. So they may have to be inter going back to the bowling balls examples or example, they might, might have to be interested in bowling balls and they've had to search for a competitor recently. And if they didn't do both of those, then your ad won't show up. Okay. Um, they may have to, uh, had went to a bowling ball event. And they've had to search for bowling balls recently, and they have to been on the bowling balls audience list. And if they weren't all three, your ad can't show up. So you can try any combination. They could be this, this, and this, this, and this, or this, uh, or they could be this, or this, or this. You could try different things there. But the main purpose of this is is to be able to say I need them to have at, at least all three of these, or they have to be on all three of these different so-called targeting lists or options in order for my ad to show up because to, to be able to uh, make your targeting refined enough to have that 1% or greater of actual buyers on your list, it takes multiple filters to get there. Facebook has something similar, but the, and they call it something different. But anyway, long story short with that, you can actually create a custom intent audience for your competitors. And then within your combined audience segments, you can actually say they must have looked at a competitor or searched for it or talked about it. And they must have, like I said, you know, they're on the in market audience that's related to my product and they have to do, they have to be on both or my ad won't show up. And that works because it, it, it there, then with that, it'll generally would increase the likelihood that somebody would be a buyer if, to be on that list, in other words. So if your ads are profitable enough, what you can do, you know, targeting a single thing, you could start making sure they have to be on two lists or three lists or four lists till you find out how to get buyers that are statistically high, or ultimately through the combination of targeting options, you've, you've eliminated enough of the non-buyers that you've reached a point where you haven't high enough buyers on the list that 
you can make a profit paying to reach the, just those specific people, i.e. 1% or greater of actual buyers, therefore the cost per click of 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, 80 cents, a dollar per click, you know, it's, it's nothing because, you know, those are the exact people you want to get in front of. And so that's the uh, general idea there. And I'll give you, a, before I leave this one, uh, one general example for this. I gave you the bowling ball example, but f we had a, a client who sold. And th th so this gives you an example of how you're going to come up with your own custom, uh, co sorry, combined audience segments for your targeting of your display campaign that will work. You got to think about how to, you got to research your customers, research your market real well, talk to your customers that, uh, you know, coming in asking questions, talk to your salespeople, read your reviews thoroughly, read your competitors' reviews, find out why people are buying. Because if you could figure out the unique traits that makes a customer that usually, once they have these certain traits in combination, they're going to buy at least 1% of the time, you got a campaign that'll work now. An example of that is we had a client who sold granite countertops. Through the investigation of talking with the client, trying to get a display campaign to work, that we would normally go through this process, which you are gonna to need to do for yourself to get your own campaign to work. Or if you're in this business, you could just use my thing here. Uh, we found out that the person, the best customers they had, or people that were more likely, most likely to convert into a customer from a lead as well, is somebody who was not just, was searching for a granite countertop, but somebody who was specifically moving soon, and they knew the new house that they wanted had the ground, uh, they wanted granite countertops in it. Because in other words, uh, you would think if somebody is searching on Google search for granite countertops, that's a pretty good uh, prospect, if you will. That's not because a lot of people think about granite countertops and getting them that a versus that actually buy them. L you know, less than 10% of the people looking into buying counter granite countertops actually buy. So just creating a display targeting campaign or ca display Google Display Network campaign targeting people that have recently searched for a granite countertop, which could be done through custom intent audiences by t putting all our, you know, buying keywords like buy granite countertops, uh, gra granite, counter lop, gra granite countertop installers and putting all those keywords in a custom intent audience and then targeting people along those lines. We targeted that and we targeted people that are going to soon be moving specifically, and also we're looking at new houses. So just in case they were looking at houses, you know, for the hell of it, we had the list saying that they were looking, you know, they were moving soon. And if, if they're moving soon, but they're not looking at new houses, then we know they're not really, it's not the same because they have to be looking at getting, you know, the granite installed in a new house that they're buying, right? So anyway, by adding in, you know, they're moving soon and they're looking at new houses, we pretty much statistically made sure that they're looking to, you know, as you, it's not just moving and not just looking at a new house, but the look, they're moving to move in a new house. And we combine that with somebody who's recently searched for a buying term, granite countertop install, installers, granite, can, granite countertop companies, granite countertop services. We know they're not just looking for granite countertop, like what, what they are, what they look like, but they were actually looking for an installer you combine all three of those traits together, we got a list of people that at least 1% of those people are gonna go and buy a granite countertop in the near future. The question is who they're gonna buy it from at that point. That's the type of thing that you're gonna to have to do and just researching your customers and why they buy and talking to your salespeople to do that, to come up with your own list of traits that you're, in other words, your customer signature, if you will. Obviously in this case, it's not all customers, but what's what are these different profiles or signature types of customers that we can compile into a, co a, a, a combined audience segment to have that 1% uh, you know, rate of buyers in that list? Because we can, if we can do that, the cost of the ads will always pay for themselves. If you will, we're not gonna be showing ads to too many people who ultimately aren't gonna be somebody who can buy from us anyway and, aren't just gonna, and are gonna buy from somebody if, if it's not us. And uh, so with that said, worked extremely good. In that particular case, we had an ad that said, new home buyer special, get granite, count, granite, top, granite countertops installed at a you know, reduced rate, special, 20% off, granite countertop uh, uh, offer. 
That wasn't the exact verbiage as we had it, but you get the general idea. Because the ads are so targeted, like I said before, you can get and speak to that consumer at their level. We know that they're moving, so they're gonna think that they found the perfect ad at the perfect time, even though what we really did was we found out exactly what traits they had and we can speak to them because we had that inside knowledge that Google gave us, if you will. So new mover special, oh, hey, that's me. 20% off for new, to have, a, you know, for somebody who's gonna be installing granite in a new house that they want. Oh, great, I was gonna do that anyway. Let's respond to this ad. I was reading this article here, but I'm not gonna do it anymore because this ad's so, I want, to, yeah, I, I can't not get this 20% off. I at least gotta see what this is about. You get them to a landing page, the landing page for um, display campaigns, generally speaking, if you're talking about lead generation, should be dedicated. You should have a dedicated landing page, one, but two, don't use the same landing page you use for your Google search campaigns. On Google search campaigns, people already know that they want to contact you and that they want to buy. You have to speak to them on a different level. When they are coming from an ad like that, you keep it extremely centered around that actual offer, just like you would on a Facebook campaign. All your landing page says is, you know, click here to get your 20% off on our new mover special. And that's the general idea. You may have a bit more information about like your testimonials, reviews and stuff at the bottom of the page, but that's the general idea. Not, we are granite countertop installation companies. And then, you know, offering a special discount to new movers this month. Because ultimately it doesn't, it's, it gets in the way. Of course they want, you know, you still want them to know that you do granite counter, countertop installation on that landing page. But the first thing you should say to them is what the offer was on the ad. New mover special, 20% off on any granite countertop installed in the month of March to uh, request it here. And then, you know, through that, they'll get the idea that at the same time that you are a granite countertop installer, but they don't have to think at all, basically, to know what was on the ad, it was pitched there, is what you're for sure offering, so there's no bait and switch there, and they don't have to think very hard. The less a person has to think, as they get to your landing page from your display ad, the higher it's gonna convert. You wanna make it so a toddler could understand it. But anyway, that's the general idea there. I gave you, a, that was a real good example of how to do combined audience segments for your company and for your market to get a campaign that will scale. And generally once it's working, work for years after that because your competitors aren't going to even be able to see what you're doing for them. And therefore it will work because of that. And uh, even if they saw your ad, they're not going to know how to target the, the, you know, the same way. So there's a great opportunity there. Lastly here, similar to audiences, I talked about this briefly before. You put the pixel on your site, eventually after running your search campaigns for a while or some of your display campaigns, you try out some of these lower, hang, uh, lower, fruit, hanging, lower hanging fruit opportunities here. Uh, you know, going after people, you know, talking about your brand already or talking about a competitor's brand. You'll eventually get, Google will show up and have, sh show up for you under your targeting options. Uh, people that are, that they say similar to your people that have been on your site. So what you do is you create a remarketing audience that's like all visitors is what you potentially could name it. And then once you have that, eventually when you have enough click data, what will pop up will say similar to all visitors or similar to the audience name of your remarketing audience. And then that will give you then essentially people that Google has matched up and on their general display network list of people that you can target across the web that have similar traits as people who've been on your site. And at that point, then you can then you know, leverage the success you basically already had running ads so far and getting customers and driving qualified people to your site you want. And then of the thousands of data points that they keep on every individual user, you can just start matching up what are all the traits that are similar to the people who come to my site? And let's just get people that have similar traits. Similar traits being they're this old, they search for this, they've usually been on this website. And once they start seeing the footprints and pattern a person you know, has when they come to your site, they could just, they don't even, uh, you don't have to use targeting options anymore in that regard because they could just find people with that entire list of behavioral traits um, 
you know, in, in that, you know, they visit these sites, they search for these things, they look for these competitors, they, they're this old, and then they can just get your ad in front of you because using the data alone, in other words. So I'll usually create a remarketing audience for all visitors, and then I'll create a remarketing audience for all customers. And then so that eventually Google can give us a similar two audience to the all visitors, as meaning all people who get to the site, as well as the people who are all you know customers already, or you know for e-commerce site it would be customers for a, a non-e-commerce site it would just be leads. So similar to the leads, I will say generally speaking, like 80, 90 percent of the time, what we do generally have though the most success with is people that are similar to overall people that get to the site, not just the customers themselves, which seems like it wouldn't work like that. You would think if Google looked at the traits of the buyers, that would be much better than looking at the traits of everybody who comes to the site, which has some buyers, some non-buyers, or people who never bought or didn't want to buy. And the reality is Google's out similar to algorithm works much better on amount of data. So, because you'll have 10, or sorry, 100 times more data on people who came to your site than actual customers, uh, even though the customer data is more refined, it's having all that, that 100 times more customer, or that 100 times more data on people who come to your site versus just the data they have on your customers to compare all the data points, they could just ultimately find you somebody to put your ad in front of much better looking at all the people who have been to your site as we have found multiple times than the people who just bought, if you will. So um, ultimately, um, which it also makes sense to me because if you're running your campaigns fairly well and you're getting qualified people to the site, the difference between somebody who buys and doesn't buy, um, it's not that big of a difference. They might just didn't have money. Whereas they've still visited all the same sites, they all search for the same things, they've all talked about the same things. And uh, so it shouldn't make that much dif of a difference of them just looking at traits of customers versus people who came to the site as a whole. And then with that, because all machine learning, which is what the, you know, the similar to uh, audience algorithm is based upon, uh, more data is always better. So having that 100 times more data, certainly it just has to work better than having 100 times less or 1% you know, of the data, but has data on somebody who actually bought, which is just has a slightly different traits, if you will. So <clears throat> anyways, the similar to audiences, like I said, if you have the remarketing audiences set up, they'll propagate into your targeting settings eventually after you've gotten so much click data through your account. Um, sooner, depending, you know, sooner the more data you, the you know, more you're advertising in, on your search campaigns and uh, that kind of thing. Or if you just have a lot of traffic to the site, that in itself can propagate the similar two audiences itself uh, by itself, if you will. So anyway, the uh, that's uh, essentially pretty much the end with that. Those are all the different methods that I are my go-tos for Google Display Network campaigns in order to get them to work, okay? So that's what you would do and, and you would work harder to set up more refined campaigns manually with, have, instead of using automatically maximized conversions, you're gonna set, you're gonna manually set bids and you're gonna be very strategic slash surgical with your targeting. And once you can't do more with one thing, you go on to the other thing and you build your campaigns up one at a time, like I was mentioning here, versus letting the algorithm try to do it for you where you're just gonna spin your tires. So anyway, with that said, if you like this video, consider giving it a like and consider subscribing because I have a ton of different information on this channel about other money-making strategies that can make you a lot of money with PPC. We offer you the best advice on actual stuff that does make money through and with PPC on this channel that you're gonna be able to find on YouTube in general because we're actually doing this stuff and giving to you on a silver platter the stuff that works for us and for our clients to guarantee the results. We also, of course, like I said here, give you the stuff that doesn't work right along with it so you don't have to waste time and money on stuff that just simply won't work. You can just take what we give it to you on this channel. Uh, beyond that, we have a blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog with step-by-step -step information on how to build campaigns to guarantee your results on your campaign 
which has been authored by myself in which I lay out for you exactly how we do our campaigns for our clients to guarantee the results. And therefore, um, with that gives you more um, baby steps on how to set these campaigns up versus on this channel, I give you more a high level on what to do. There we go into very, you know, high, high we go into high detail on how to set the actual campaigns up. If you want to go ahead and take a look at that information as well. If you have any questions about anything I uh, shared today, leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel, usually within a couple days time. As a last final thing, I wanted to mention, as I've been mentioning on the last few videos now, how we have a brand new program at Guarantee PPC where we offer turnkey PPC campaigns. I'm really excited about this as uh, this is really helpful to a lot of you guys who, uh, you know, you're frustrated. Uh, you may not have all the money in the world to, you know, go through and test different things on your PPC campaigns or you know, make sure to add all the negative keywords that you're going to need that you can't get through this channel by itself and go through what the average person still has to go through to build up a nice campaign for yourself. You could t literally take the results that our other clients have got in a similar market that you're in or in another in a market that you would like to set up a business in and apply it directly to your campaign and get the same kind of results they are. Uh, we literally have many, many different campaigns in many, many different markets in the service field where we're generating millions of dollars of profitable sales a year, you could set up a business in that same kind of market, but in a different geographic territory where you would cross paths and get the same multi-million dollar sales at a profitable rate for your company doing that and potentially just outsource the work to another company. And you have a business that works just because you have the golden ticket, i.e. the PPC campaign that works for that market already. We also have product campaigns, clients that sell products. They don't need those campaigns anymore. They're running something more sophisticated that works even better. They're abandoned campaigns, but they're still profitable. You can run a campaign and sell similar markets, or sorry, sorry uh, similar products, uh, which is not a conflict of interest. And you can essentially have a business in a box, if you will, given the hardest thing to, about starting most of these businesses and competitive markets is having the PPC campaign set up the proper way to work, whereas anybody can get those products. And so anyway, if you're potentially maybe even looking to see if we have a campaign in your market, you can reach out to us at Guarantee PPC. Otherwise, uh, if you're looking to maybe start up a new business and wanted to use one of our campaigns, you can have that as well. We give you the campaigns, the landing pages, and the results that you would get right up front, uh, all as part of the of a turnkey package. So anyway, with that said, I'll wrap it up uh, with that. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on my next one where we have another great actionable piece of advice for you to be able to make more money with PPC. See you there.